Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown, and it is two and a half weeks until Election Day. Two weeks until Election Day. We have sat down with two months worth of municipal candidates, but there are other elections that are currently going on for October 18th municipal election. And this week, we will be sitting down with school board trustees from across the city to talk about them, their campaign, and the future of the Calgary Board of Education. Our first guest for the series of school board trustees is Calgary Board of Education School Board Trustee Candidate for Ward 6 and 7, Olga Barcelo. Olga, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Olga, I'm going to ask the same question I've asked every single candidate for any municipal, any uh, political office. Uh, where does your sense of duty to serve come from? It would 100% come from my family. So my mom is a United Nations sponsored refugee from Chile. My dad came as an immigrant from Chile and they both fled fascism. They both fled a dictatorship that was really harmful and it was evil, I think. But um, it comes from the fact that my grandfather at the time in Chile was a labor activist who was very involved and always encouraged my mom to get involved. And at the time, women were not always encouraged to get involved in politics. But he, my grandfather made the effort for my mom, and my mom made sure that I was able to harness that energy and go forward with it. Uh, elected politics is a, a, a unique experience in its own. Are you the first in your family to run for elected politics? Was politics talked about at, this, uh, at your dinner table growing up? What got you involved in elected politics? Yeah, so I, I am the first person to run for office within my family here in Canada. And I mean... It definitely, politics was always talked about. I was never given, like, persuaded different perspectives from my family. They kind of said, you know, just research what you can, make your own decisions for yourself. You're a smart woman. You can do that yourself. But uh, it came to be that we very much were all on the same side of progressive politics and just um, supporting people however we can. And, yeah, I mean, politics has always been a big part of my life. I am very aware of the fact that on September 11th, 1973, that was the coup that happened in Chile. As a result, my parents are here, and I'm here because of that. Um, you have decided to give back in a way that not many people have uh, by putting your name on the ballot for October 18th for school board trustee for Ward 6 and 7. Why in 2021 did you think it was important for your name to be on the ballot? I think for right now, we need new perspectives on the board. We need people who have different life experiences as you, you can see me right here. <laughs> I am not the typical person who would run in politics. You know, I'm a young Latina woman. We have not been represented very well in politics, especially municipal politics here in Calgary. And I think that needs to change. And given everything that's happening with this new curriculum draft, I had enough seeing this. I have a little cousin who he's 11. He's going to school right now. And I know this curriculum will really just not be good. And I really hope that if I am elected, I would be part of the group that would not pass it. We are uh, in a unique time, COVID-19. Um, school is coming back. Or it's actually, we are recording this uh, literally the week before school is back, if not a few days before school is back. Um, COVID-19 is going to be a game changer for students going forward. Uh, the school board will have to be addressing this the next term right mm -hmm. now. Hopefully, if they aren't, they need to be addressing this. What are you hearing from parents right now around COVID-19, around going back to school? And I know this is coming out in October, and I apologize for the time delay here, everyone who's listening and watching, but I want to address this. What are you hearing from the parents about going back to school right now? People are scared. People are very scared. I was just at um, an event in Triwood uh, on Friday, and uh, I met with some people who were saying they have children who are going back, and they're really worried because we have the Delta variant, which is rampaging through this province and cases are going up people are worried i mean with because kids under the age of 12 can't get vaccinated right so that's a big concern for a lot of people right now so i think with the mask mandate coming back now for schools for the cbe it's a really good thing and it's something that's necessary so would you have voted for the mask mandate to bring uh, for the, this upcoming school year if you were on count or on as a school board trustee if you were on the trustee board yes because Kids are so confined within classrooms, right? And if they can't get vaccinated, it's another problem because they're more easily able to spread it to other people. And I think that's a big concern for, for many people. I mean, my cousin, he's 11. He just turned 11 this August and missed the deadline to, for 
to be 12 to get the vaccine. So I know my uncle, who's a single father, he's very concerned about that. My uncle is immunocompromised and a lot of parents just, they worry about that because kids are getting this, kids are dying, but no one seems to be talking about it, unfortunately. You, you said in your statement a few minutes, a few seconds ago, that you want to bring a, a new perspective. You want to bring a fresh perspective to the yeah. school board. What is it, what perspective, what ideas do you want to bring forward? Because at the end of the day, people who are listening to this in Ward 6 and 7 who are thinking about voting, or who should be voting, I should say that, who should be getting out and voting, advance voting, or on election day, what perspectives do you want to bring to the CPE? I remember when I was going to high school here in Calgary, I mean, I went through the whole system here, and I remember my high school, I went to Bonas High School, it was, there was a part of it that was literally crumbling. We could not walk within there because of the danger of it. And I think for many years, people were just kind of ignoring those issues, and I think we need to really be addressing them. We need to be supporting schools, we need to be supporting students, having proper class sizes, we need to be advocating to this to the provincial government. And I think having the perspective that I do with, with what I saw, I know what needs to change, and I know that I could be a voice to definitely really push for it. Why don't you think it's changed? Because uh, it seems like every time I, uh, I've i chatted with uh, school board trustee candidates, they always say, class sizes are too big, class sizes need to be reduced, so that way we get more teachers in there. Why do you think that it hasn't happened? And with COVID-19 being the way it is, do you think we can change it? It is going to be a t challenge to change it because of COVID-19, mm -hmm. because online learning, reducing class sizes is going to be tricky. But why do you think it's not happened? And how do we do it? How do we actually change it? How do we get class sizes smaller? Well, it's all down to policy, right? I think having people at the table who are interested in writing policy, who are interested in talking to people about policy, that's where it changes. We've had years and years of of conservatives in politics that they just haven't necessarily gone out of their way to change things because it's kind of just stayed the same for the past what 40 years i think that's unacceptable we need change and we need people who are going to really like they're look they need to look at what's happening i mean class sizes really affect students learning and with COVID, as you've mentioned that's a really interesting thing too because I don't know what the future holds for what's going to be happening here in, let's say, November if, let's say, there is another lockdown because, I mean, I don't know. I don't think anybody really knows at this moment. So with online learning, that's really tough. And I mean, I, in a different perspective, I finished my degree online through Mount Royal University, and it was definitely a different experience. And I think we just need to be talking to people and really just communicating and making sure all voices are heard in this regard. Why, why do you believe that all voices haven't been heard? I think because a lot of the time people just, within Alberta, especially from what I've seen, at least working in different aspects of politics, people in Alberta don't feel heard a lot of the time, which is a really unfortunate thing. And I think we really need to hone in on that and take accountability. And that comes from all levels. Most people who get elected to school board have gone to school themselves. Why is your unique perspective, and I know you talked about you being a Latino woman, but why do you believe your unique perspective is the best voice for today's council, today's uh, uh, Calgary Board of Education? Why do you believe right now that people should be getting out and voting for you? Because there's going to be other people who come on this show who are going to say the exact same thing. But why you and why do you believe your perspective is the right one because everyone's yeah. gone through the school system like you exactly no and i completely get where you're coming from i think it's an it's a question of representation we're seeing a younger demographic coming in calgary now we're seeing a more diverse population within calgary and i think that is something that has not been really seen explicitly in the school board because we have people who are typically parents and who are older who have different perspectives but i mean myself i don't have children but i think that can give me a perspective as I've it's been a pretty recent time that I've gone through the system. I'm able to just hone in on my experiences and talk to people, my friends who have children, and I've been hearing from them like it'd be nice to have a different uh, perspective, someone like me, because I think voices like my own aren't necessarily always heard in politics. And I think it is just um, it's something that we can really expand on. You, you talked about it briefly, and I want to dive into this part because this is going to be the major thing that the next council, the next uh, board is going to have to deal with is the new curriculum that the provincial government has introduced. I wouldn't say passed because I'm not sure if it's actually passed or not, but the Calgary Board of Education has said that they do not want it. They want the province to go back and rewrite it. 
when you read the uh, the curriculum, I'm assuming mm-hmm. because you're running, you read the curriculum. What stood out for you that made it a no go for you? So much. <laughs> There's so much. <laughs> let's uh, let's uh, dive into start? it. <laughs> um, but I think the most a really telling thing for me that I just had a big issue with was it's within the math aspect. There is an assignment. I I, rem- I don't remember which grade specifically, but I know that there's a part where they're looking into it where there's like an assignment where students have to kind of budget out what people's like their families spend on them. And I think that can be really problematic for people who are lower socioeconomically, right? That is really detrimental for people who have lower incomes. I mean, how can someone be openly saying, oh, well, one student is getting x from their parents because they have the capabilities to do so but then another student is getting y and it just doesn't add up you know it's really damaging for students and i mean with what's happening right now with everything in the social studies curriculum i mean it's scary do you do do you hear from parents hear from potential voters about the curriculum because i've talked to i think all sides of the the political spectrum when i and i hear two different sides of the story i think some people say it's a great uh thing and we need it and others say like yourself we need to look at a little bit more in depth what are the parents telling you about the curriculum that has been introduced by the kenny government what i'm hearing is that parents don't think that this curriculum is going to be setting up their kids for success in the future because really yeah and people are very concerned about that because it just it isn't with the times and that's kind of what I'm hearing. Everyone who has spoken to me has been just curious about my perspective, and they're very pleased to hear that I'm against the curriculum draft. So what would you want? What would you want in a curriculum? Because at the end of the day, you will be the next uh, trustee for Ward 6 and 7, if elected, and you will have input. What would you like to see to help make our students be prepared for the future, but also be prepared for the job market? Yeah, well, if elected, I would definitely be wanting to consult extensively with the education minister and just (laughs) kind of, (laughs) yeah, hopefully um, more or less we can just talk about it more thoroughly and just understand, like, people need to learn about other things. There needs to be more representation, more diversity within the curriculum we need to be learning about, specifically with Indigenous matters. I think that's something that really needs to be acknowledged, especially with residential schools. I mean, I have people who... I've gone to school with here in Calgary who did not even learn about it until they were in university. I was lucky to learn about it in grade four. And I mean, it was definitely in a perspective that that came with the times, I suppose. But I was lucky to have parents who told me like, no, this is what happened. And here's some more resources for you. So I wish that sometimes schools offered a bit more different resources that could be offered for students so that they could learn more and understand it. Because I mean, if kids were taken away at young ages, kids need to learn about it. So, you, as someone who has recently gone through the system and gone through, and I shouldn't say system, but has graduated and graduated from Mount, uh, Mount Royal, but also from uh, public school system, do you believe our current curriculum is, a, is in a good shape to uh, ensure the success for our youth? Well, with the current curriculum, because it's the same one that we've had for the past 44 years, right? I mean, my mom and I both had the same curriculum, (laughs) so that's saying something there. But I think there's changes that just need to be made, changes to just different, I guess, understandings and learning about different things. Because, I mean, I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at with that. I think it just needs to be updated for the times. We are living in a very diverse uh, city. Yeah. We have... uh, a very diverse set of values, the morals that are uh, in this city. We have a very diverse population with people from all over the world residing in this community, in this city. How do you envision representing all of the diverse uh, opinions, but also all the diverse issues that families are going to bring to you? Because we have Sikhs, we have Muslims, we have uh, Caucasians, we have Black people, we have Indigenous people, we have Latinas who are in this community and they don't feel represented in the school system. How, as a Latina woman, will you ensure that you represent everyone in the city? I love talking to people, you know. I know that's so cheesy, but I really do. I mean, you could put me in a room and I won't shut up. But I love hearing from people, you know. I love talking to people. And I was pretty lucky. Um, I don't know if you know this, Chris. I grew up abroad for the first 10 years of my life. So my dad was working in India for a railway company. And I was born here in Calgary, but at three weeks old, I moved to India for 10 years. Oh, wow. And I was lucky to grow up in such a diverse like community. I mean, I went to an international school, as most kids of um, expats do. 
and I got to meet people who I would never have met. And then I came back to Canada at 10 years old, went right into public school. So I've always been super open to talking to everyone, having friends, having just different like relations with everyone. Just I love people and I love diversity. I think it's our strength. The f- we, we often say that municipal politics is the front line of politics, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But technically, I would say I would I would disagree with that statement. I would say school board is mm-hmm. because parents are invested in their future of their children. They want the best education. They want the safest schools. They want people, they want their schools to best educate their kids. You will have a tough job because this is, like I said, a very diverse com- uh, city. It is also a city that is still dealing with the pandemic of COVID-19. Yeah. Hopefully by November it will not, but by the looks of it, it still will be here. You will have a tough job of balancing the needs of everyone with the needs of a few people who come to you and say, I need this issue fixed. I need this issue fixed. How do you balance that? Because you have to look at the bigger picture. You have to look at the school system as a whole. While you were there to represent six and seven, the wards, you have to look at the bigger picture and say, Calgary as a whole. How do you do that in a very divisive time when politics is so right and left? That's a really great question. And I think, (laughs) no, I mean, I really do mean it because I think it comes down to just being decent, you know, having a board where we can be open with each other and talk to each other without politics getting in the way of that. And I know that municipal politics is nonpartisan, but that's really tough, you know? (laughs) I mean, totally. (laughs) (laughs) It's a very tough thing to navigate, right? And I think I, mind you, I have friends of all political stripes and we'll have our discussions, but I always keep it civil because I think that's the best way to go about this. I mean, that's something that I was always told, like never judge someone for that, but just kind of stand your ground on where you think it's important. And I agree with that. But how do you outweigh the needs of the few with the needs of the many? Because you were there yeah. to represent six and seven, but you were also there to represent all of Calgary. Right. So how do you how do you go back to your people of mm-hmm. Ward six and seven and say, guys, I wish we could uh, expand this school or I wish we could do more for this program. Mm-hmm. But in the bigger picture, we have to deal with this issue first. Yeah. How do you envision dealing with that? Because people are going to come to you mm-hmm. at every like online via oh, yeah. like the grocery store and tell you yeah. what they're thinking. How do you outweigh the needs of the few with the needs of the many? I'm Ironic. quoting Star Trek. I apologize, everyone. <laughs> I, I caught on to that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> my mom made me watch Star Trek growing up. Anyway. You're my um, new favorite trusty oh, candidate. <laughs> love it. Um, but I think, look, and it's ironic because I'm – running for politics but honesty that's a really big thing that i think is important and that we need to really just hone in on and accountability because people will be coming to me and i expect them to and i hope that they do because it's important for democracy but what does honesty and accountability mean to you it's being there being present being open to criticism taking what you can and just listening because i mean maybe i have a perspective that someone in ward six or seven doesn't have and It's really thinking, like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should be taking from them, you know? And just really, like, learning and being open more so than other people could be. I mean, that's kind of where I'm at with that. And I think with bringing back to the question of, um, like, the benefits for the greater good as opposed to just a couple people, you know, I think that would just come with what's happening in that moment because given COVID, for example, like, if we're seeing cases going up for children, if we're seeing outbreaks in schools, like, we really need to be just focusing on what's going to benefit everyone. We don't, we can't have an education system with students dying. Um, I did not prepare you for this question. Okay. And I'm going to ask this question because COVID-19 is um, rearing its ugly head. Mm-hmm. We have parents who believe that kids should not have to wear masks. Mm-hmm. We believe we have kids who believe that uh, they should not have to get vaccinated. Mm-hmm. Um, the Calgary Board of Education has implemented the mask mandate yeah. going into the school year. People are frustrated. People are angry. I think there is a very big uh, undertone right now that people do not. There are There's two sides of the issue, and there's the right side and there's the wrong side. And I won't say which is which, but I think you can guarantee <laughs> which is which side I believe is the right side. How do you talk to those people who, while you can be honest, while you can be accountable to them, They will look at you and say, you're killing our kids for making them wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. That's a really tough question, you know, but I think you have to just listen and you have to understand that they're not necessarily, 
mind you, I'm I'm for masking. I'm for, I'm double vaccinated. I, I myself I have a heart condition that I can't take a lot of the therapies that they're offering for people with COVID. So I've been really careful. I mean, my dad has had two strokes, open heart surgery. So my family were very careful with all of that. But coming back to the question of with parents thinking that the masks are, masks are killing their kids, that's tough. You know, they're coming from a place of fear and it, and it's understandable because this is a scary time and maybe it's a way for them to kind of just cope. I, I can't speak to that. I don't know their experience, right? No, and I, and I appreciate you taking the, uh, being honest and answering yeah. the question as best as you can because it is a tricky situation and the next uh, board will have to deal with it because yeah. there you see on media all the time that people are mm -hmm. frustrated and people yeah. are angry. And just, I think, it's important to listen to them because at the end of the day, they're constituents and their voices will matter. And I don't want to make them feel ostracized or ignored because maybe I don't have the same perspective as them. I mean, I'll tell them honestly, like, look, this is my perspective and this is the benefit for public health. It's, it's known, it's science-based, but I get where you're coming from and I get your fear, but I will just promise to do my best and make sure that I will make sure that their kids are safe. And that's kind of all that I can really offer to them in that moment. But it really is a very unfortunate thing. I This pandemic has really brought out so much within politics. Uh, understandable. I, I want to take a moment right now and um, I want to look at the future. Yeah. You, October 19th, are the newly elected... 18th? No, on... Oh, no, nine, oh the, sorry. On, 19th, <laughs> sorry. On, on the 19th, the morning of the 19th, yeah. you are the newly elected school board trustee for Ward 6 and 7 for the Calgary Board of Education. What is priority number one for you? Getting to work as soon as possible. I'm not sure in all honesty how that would work, but I mean, the transition in, just talking to my fellow colleagues who will be elected, I immediately want to get to work. I immediately want to talk to them and say, look, what do we need to do? How do we do this? We need to come as a team and work together because one person can't do everything. We need the seven of us. We need all of us there who want to be there for the right reasons. Um, I, this is this is the part of this, uh, the questioning that if you've been listening for the last two months, you know where I'm going to go with this. Um, anyone in business, anyone in uh, projects will know that you need to put metrics in place to ensure that you are successful as a school board trustee, as a, a counselor. Looking at first 100 days in office, what do you want to accomplish? What, what are the things that you want to make sure are addressed? And then after 100 days, you can go, you know what? I got one, two, and three on the radar of the school board, or I got people to start thinking a little bit differently. What are the things that you want to get accomplished within that first 100 days? Yeah, I'm trying to think what exactly that would be within the next year, like what month. Uh, we're looking into spring, though. So I mean, so you're looking at probably January 5th. Yeah, uh, yeah, late. So you're still, Winter. you're literally still in, in the midst of the, your first 100 days. Yeah. And usually the first 100 days is the most important 100 days because it sets the tone of your term in right. office no totally so what is going to be your priorities and what are the metrics that you're going to is it going to each school is it talking to is it setting up monthly town halls with the parents so they can contact you yeah. what are the metrics i think with that i definitely like if elected i would love to host a town hall as soon as i can obviously in a safe capacity most likely through zoom d depending on cases and how that's going if in person then masked as well and socially distanced but no, I think, yeah, meeting with constituents is going to be the biggest thing. Meeting people who want to talk to me, who want to just, we can bring in collaborative ideas and just kind of go forward from there. But with the board, I want to just really be active and meet with them really right away. And then we can have a meeting, hopefully, with the Minister of Education and just go forward from there. And um, at this moment, the biggest thing is just working against this the draft curriculum and making sure it doesn't pass in um, the next year. Well, I'm going to ask the question Sorry. because you, you just said the statement that I'm, I need to follow up on. You are a school board. The province dictates the curriculum. Yep. They will pass the curriculum or they will not pass the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, if they pass it, you will have to, as much as the school board probably does not want to, will have to implement it into the school system. That's going to be a challenge for you because yep. you are on the record right now yep. saying that you're not in favor of it. How mm -hmm. do you envision doing that? Have you ever had to deal with a situation where someone has told you to do something and while your morals and your values say not to, the, dic the direction of the higher powers are saying you have to? That's tough. I, To be honest, I haven't been in that position. And I think it's going to be a very tough experience and it's going to be a very, lear like, I'll learn a lot from it. You know, I think it's important to stand your ground where you have to. And I know for sure that if other there's other candidates who are running for school board trustee who have the same position that I do that we're against it completely. And 
we will do what we can. I don't, I can't think of anything at the moment of what we would be doing, but you know, we would just do everything that we can in that moment. No, and I appreciate your honesty and your candor about that. I want to ask you one last question before we do our wrap up here. Sure. Welcome to this camera. Okay. Welcome to this camera. Speak to the people of Ward 6 and 7 who are going to vote for you. Why should you be the next school board trustee for Ward 6 and 7 for the Calgary Board of Education? I will be there to listen to you. I will always take whatever type of criticism or compliment, I mean, anything. I am there to represent you. And I think that that's something that's not necessarily really talked about or seen in politics quite often. People get into it for the wrong reasons. I, myself, I am not the typical person who would be elected in office. And I think that that's really telling. And I think someone like me, I am willing to listen because people oftentimes do not listen to people like me. And I know what that's like. And having that lived experience myself, I would be there to just take anything that you need, talk to you about anything that you need. And I value public education to such an extreme. I think it's such a beneficial thing for society and we really need it. And we need to have children's like set up for success in the future. I mean, I know my future children, they will 100% be going through the CBE system like I did, like my fiance did. And, you know, I just think we need to really support that and we need to make sure their futures are secure and hopefully we have a really great future generation in alberta here because we have a great province that we live in you are as of this airing on october 4th you are 14 days away from the campaign from election day you need people to volunteer you need people to help get your message out you need people to contact you if they can how can they do that what avenues yeah. can they reach out to you and get involved, but also ask you the questions that we haven't talked about here? Sure, yeah. Email um, olgabarcelo, yyc at gmail.com. I am there. You can email me whenever. I'm active both on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'll have my website. Is My website will be out, and there will be a part there just for contacting and kind of going forward from there. The biggest thing is just going to be getting the signs up because that's, that's going to be fun, you know. A lot of hard work, but it's good. Um, for those who are listening and those who are watching, I just want to remind everyone that Olga's email address, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram and website, if she provides it, uh, will be in the show notes, yep. uh, but she will provide it. She says she's just confirming right now. She will provide it if I can't find it um, in the show notes. So please, 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 please. I hate to sound like I'm beating a dead horse, but I got to say this. Get out. Get educated. Learn about the candidates who are running in this election. And at the end of the day, if you do not vote, I do not want to hear you complaining on Twitter. So get out and vote. Olga, I Thanks, want to thank Chris. you for doing this. Yep. This has been an honor and a pleasure. And I, I wish you the best because the school board is another election that is happening on October 18th. And I want people to understand, vote for all of the people that best represent your values and your morals. Olga, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so exciting. I've been listening to your podcast for a while, so you know I Yay. felt honored when I talked to you. <laughs> Yay! Um, uh, like I said, uh, this week we'll be doing uh, a full week of sit-down interviews with candidates who are running for school board trustee. Uh, everyone, have yourself an excellent rest of the day. Enjoy your October 4th, but also at the end of the day, please, 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 just start talking to people, have a discussion, get off Twitter for five minutes and go <laughs> out and talk to people. For everyone here at the Cross Border Interview Podcast, have yourself an excellent rest of the Monday and we'll be back Tuesday morning. Talk to you later, guys.